Thermoregulation is the maintenance of a steady body temperature of an organism even if the surrounding temperature is highly variable. It is important because each organism has a preferred body temperature boundary at which it functions optimally. While every species regulates its body temperature slightly differently, there are two main categories of thermoregulators. The first category species are the endotherms, or commonly called warm-blooded animals. They are capable of maintaining their own internal body temperature by generation of heat. They can do this by increasing the rate of metabolism by muscle shivering. These species have unique ways of cooling off and will be further explained. The second category of species are the ectotherms, or commonly called cold-blooded animals. Although their blood isn't necessarily cold, these species regulate their body temperature by exchanging heat with their surroundings. They are known for their thermoregulation by behavior. Arthropods are characterized by their sturdy exoskeleton, segmented bodies, jointed legs, compound eyes, and specialized mouth parts. Arthropods are ectothermic and obtain their internal temperature from their surroundings. Butterflies, from the order of Lepidoptera, are heliothermic, meaning that they obtain heat directly from sunlight. The butterfly relies largely on its wings to thermoregulate because they are vascular and thin, making them optimal conductors of heat. Butterflies engage in matutinal warming by capturing the sun's light in the morning. They actively seek sunny surfaces, opening their wings and angling them in the most optimal position in which to capture the sun's rays. Generally, after the first longer warming in the morning, heating and cooling themselves will require less time and effort. Conversely, if a butterfly becomes overheated, they seek the shelter of shaded areas and are thought to increase respiration to rid themselves of excess heat. Most butterflies do not fare well in cold temperatures, so they either die or migrate to a warmer climate. External cues such as shortening of the days, cooler temperatures, and plant senescence triggers diapause in butterflies, alerting them to begin the migratory process. Arachnids are also poikilothermic ectotherms. They can be seen basking in the sun on cooler days and seeking shelter from it in scorching weather. Many spiders die when the first frost hits, leaving behind eggs to overwinter. However, some spiders, such as the jumping spider of the family Soltacidae, build homes called pup tents. Pup tents are strategically placed in protected areas. During the winter, the jumping spider enters diapause or a state of dormancy until spring. Honeybees, of the genus Apis, thrive in warmer weather and are considered partial ectotherms because they can generate some heat on their own. This gives them an advantage because they can start their day earlier than other ectotherms. However, when the environmental temperature drops below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, they form a massive huddle around the queen and shiver to pump hemolymph, or blood, to generate heat. The bees will take turns moving to the outside of the huddle so that all of the bees are able to stay warm. Throughout the winter months, bees consume stored honey as an energy source so that they can continue to produce warmth. Interestingly, honeybees will also use this shivering mechanism to swarm an invading wasp or other organism. The heat generated in the center can reach 116 degrees Fahrenheit, effectively cooking the invader. Sharks are a member of the phylum Chordata and class Chondrices. Most sharks are ectothermic, which means that they cannot regulate their body temperature with their metabolism. Instead, it is controlled by the temperature of the water that they happen to be swimming in. Some sharks like the great white, can regulate their body temperature, which makes them endothermic animals. These sharks have a network of capillaries called Rete Mirabile, translated to mean wonderful network. These capillaries, located between the red swimming muscles, serve as heat exchangers. Heat from muscle activity is transported by blood vessels that bring oxygen-deficient blood to the gills. Blood vessels with thin walls and cold oxygenated blood from the gills run in the opposite direction along heated vessels which warms them up and transfers heat to blood flowing through the body. At the same time, blood flowing towards the gills cools off so that it doesn't lose any heat to the external environment. This process is called countercurrent heat exchange. It is so efficient that hardly any heat is lost through the gills, and the internal body temperature is anywhere between 5 degrees Celsius to 14 degrees Celsius warmer than the water. This makes it possible for heat to be allocated to places needed for catching prey, 
such as the brain, muscles, stomach, and intestines. Snails of the phylum mollusca are ectothermic gastropods that typically have to move about to different conditions in order for thermoregulation to take place. They are classified based upon fight or flight response. In regards to fight, that means remaining and tolerating those conditions, whereas flight means to seek out better conditions. In the case of marine snails, some species have the ability to orient themselves to prevent overheating by causing the apex, also known as the tip of the shell, to point directly at the sun. This decreases the exposure of the body to the sun. These types of snails are typically living in intertidal rocky shores. Unlike marine snails, terrestrial snails are at a higher risk of being desiccated due to hot and dry seasons. Fortunately, these snails have evolved adaptive abilities to these conditions. Snails with brighter shells don't heat up as quickly as snails with darkly colored shells. Also, smaller shells are less likely to experience water loss. Many terrestrial snails simply climb onto vegetation or rocks to avoid higher temperatures. It has been found that the snail's internal temperature decreases as the elevation from the soil increases. There are also snail species that estivate during the unfavorable conditions to conserve energy and water. Another organism of the phylum mollusca is the octopus. Octopi are cephalopods that are ectothermic. Like the snails, they either remain and tolerate the environmental conditions or seek out better conditions. Recently it has been discovered that some octopi that live in the polar regions have the ability to alter their RNA in order to change the proteins of their nervous system. Therefore, they have the ability to adapt and live in cold water conditions. It has also been discovered that the Antarctic octopods have blue blood due to the pigment hemocyanin, which allows the octopus to thrive in cold conditions. The phylum chordata contains a great diversity of species from seven different classes, and each one handles the important task of thermoregulation in their own unique way. These classes include mammalia, aves, amphibia, reptilia, chondrichthyes, agnatha, and osteichthyes. While there are still two clearly definitive categories of endotherms and ectotherms, each species have different traits and abilities that they use to raise or lower their body temperature. Penguins are birds, therefore they have many bird-like characteristics, such as being endothermic. The optimal temperature boundary for penguins is between 100 and 102 degrees Fahrenheit, which is quite high for a species that lives in a colder environment. Penguins have many traits that allow them to keep such high body temperatures. They use fat and feathers for insulation. Along with insulation, their feathers can be used to provide waterproofing, trapping air, think of insulated windows and how they use air for insulation, and they are impenetrable to wind. They also have a complex heat exchange system in their nasal passages that allows them to recapture 80% of heat escaping in their breath. Penguins are endotherms, meaning they use muscle shivering and their metabolism to regulate their body temperature. However, they also use their behavior in thermoregulation. If penguins are cold, they can tuck their flippers in close to their body and will stay active while in the water to generate more body heat. Sometimes they will tip their feet, reducing the amount of contact with ice, and huddle together in groups of up to 6,000. It may sound crazy, but penguins can actually overheat. While this doesn't happen frequently and only occurs on land, they can reduce their body temperature by moving into shaded areas, panting, ruffling their feathers to allow built up air to escape, hold their flippers away from their body, and they even have a complex circulatory system that dilates their blood vessels, bringing heat to the surface of their body. Frogs from the class Amphibia are ectothermic. They must maintain a desirable temperature through behavior. If the environmental temperature is too low, they can sunbathe or draw heat from the environment or sun. This kind of behavior is found in most ectotherms. If the environmental temperature is too high, they can retreat to a shelter, move to the closest body of water, and use evaporative cooling as a way to reduce their body temperature. By moving to a body of water, frogs not only cool off, but rehydrate to help in evaporative cooling as well. Evaporative cooling is used by many chordates and uses evaporation of water to produce a cooling effect. 
One unique thermoregulation ability of frogs is the ability to change the color of their skin. This allows them to cool off either by lightening their skin or heating up by darkening their skin.